Hello everyone. Uh, my topic this evening is regarding the AJ Armstrong story. Um, it's a story that's really a sad story and it's going on now in court in Harris County, Houston. Um, I'm not a judge. I'm not a jury. I'm not a police officer. I'm not the forensics. I'm not the ADT alarm system people. I'm not the cell phone people. I'm just a regular person. I'm not even a mother nor a father. I'm a stepmother to three wonderful kids uh, that I helped raise in California. But I just want to talk a little bit about the story and about the facts of the story. You know, I love kids. As I said, I raised three. They love me, I love them. Um, and so I'm not one to want to convict anyone's children or to try to uh, discredit anybody's children. But I just want to talk a little bit about this story, the real facts. First of all, anyone knows exactly what I'm speaking about. If there's an intruder that would come into your house, would they come to your house to look for your gun during the middle wee wee hours of the night? Would they try to scrounge around to find out where it is. First of all, they shouldn't even know where it is. And secondly, they would think possibly everyone in the house will wake up because this is an intruder that's coming into your house. Now, everyone knows that. I mean, even a baby would know that. If you're an intruder, you would go into someone's house to rob, kill, and destroy. They would kill everybody in sight. They would rob everything that they want, especially knowing that you are a high profile person. They know you have nice jewelry and nice things in that home. Everyone knows that. I mean, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to even try to figure that one out. Um, they just wouldn't do it. I mean, just think about it. Do you think somebody would come into your house looking for your gun in the wee hours of the night, not afraid that you might catch them first and kill them? You might kill them before they get you because of the fact you woke up somebody in that house. Okay? So that is the first thing. And the second thing, you definitely, any intruder, any intruder, in the history of life, would never leave the murder weapon behind. No, that just doesn't happen. You know that. I know that. A baby know that. Everyone knows that. No intruder would ever come to your house in the dark, scrounging to look for your gun, turn around and kill you, and then leave the weapon behind. That's a no-no. That is a no-no, for real. And the next thing is the alarm system. The alarm system, you never hear it on TV, you never hear it in the news, you know this, that it didn't work. Normally it works, and especially those ring bells, because I saw on the news today where a lady caught someone breaking into her home and she was out of town with that ring doorbell. Even those work. And the police got there like three minutes later, someone got killed in that particular incident. Um, but these systems work. And especially if you're a high profile person, you gotta make sure they work. You gotta know that they work. And they really do work. Now, 
Okay, now if you have a garage, and even if you keep a garage cracked, and they were saying that it'll bypass and you can't tell the door, but what about the motion detector that picked up movement from upstairs downstairs? So either way it goes, if a garage was cracked and it wouldn't um, let the alarm go off, then if an intruder did come into your house and they went upstairs to commit a crime in your house, the same motion that picked you up, someone up coming down, they would pick up that intruder that came in going up. You know that. Everyone knows that. So it doesn't even matter if the garage door was cracked because the motion, in this particular case, the motion picked up someone coming down. So it was working properly, that motion. It would have picked them up going up. It picked someone up coming down. And the next thing I wanted to say is the kid practiced with the weapon. That was definitely a big, big takeaway in this case. Because when you practice with the weapon and you say you never touch the weapon, anybody know this. What I'm saying now, everyone knows. On one hand, you said didn't touch it. And then when they went into the room, they saw a bullet hole underneath socks. That's a big dead giveaway. Everybody know that. But what I feel in this particular case, it's all about money because everybody's making money, 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 money. A lot of people just going for the ride. Um, it's just like that OJ case. Everybody was writing books and trying to get famous off of somebody else's uh, dead bodies. You know, it's really something. So in this particular case, all of those things there with the, and then another thing is when you're up at night at the same time and the phone shows, see technology now is very, 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 very sophisticated. It can pick up anything you do. Matter of fact, I was told uh, if you have a computer, turn your camera off because it's going to show everything that's going around in your house. Another thing, the phone. It tells when you flip on a light, when you plug and unplug, and where you, what are your movements in the house, the time you're on the phone. And in this particular case, it showed everything down to the fine line. You know that. Anybody that's been watching this trial knows that. My thing is people are like, how could the grandparents even let them throw that brother under the bus? You know how you see those comments? How could you let those grandkids, how could you let them put your own grandkid, even though he was from a different father, he was still the grandsons of her mother and her father. And it's because when you have lost, I think because they have lost a loved one, they don't want to lose another one. But in my mind, if anybody hurt anybody that I love, I mean, I just couldn't even sleep with them or be around them or, uh, you know, but now on the time, if I was a kid, that child, I would go ahead and plead guilty because that way you would at least get out at a, you know, a younger age. Um, I just, you know, like I say, I'm not a judge, a jury, and I couldn't be, and I wouldn't want to be. But I think there is some psychological uh, something going on, mental, and it could be in the bloodline because remember the... Uh, other brother had some problem. I would suggest that they give him some time for the crime 
and then therapy for the mind. Because I've been 16, you've been 16, many people have been 16. A lot of 16 year olds have killed their parents and a lot of kids snap when they do drugs. Uh, Oftentimes, many people, not even just kids, have done a crime and they wake up the next morning when the drug is gone and they're like, wow, what did I do? I'm sitting in prison and I can't even remember what I did. So sometimes when a crime is committed, it's through a drug. However, it should be mind over matter because I know I have a brother that was out there one time and I'm just, you know, telling my truth and I'm just telling the story. You know, I mean, I'm trying to tell a story where you could understand because when I say it, it's true because I'm putting it to the dots to the I'm putting all the dots in line from what we're seeing with this particular case, the A.J. Armstrong case. But I have a brother who was out there and he was on drugs. And my brother told me a nephew wanted to steal his mother's lawnmower. His mother would be my sister, right? And no matter how many drugs he was on, his mind wouldn't even let him go there. He's like, oh no, you will not. You will not, I don't care how much drugs we want, you will not harm your mother in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, these were drug people. They're not on it in now, but this was told to me by my own brother. So what I'm saying, some people need some help because it's a demon inside. They need psychological help, mental help, because... Even the crackheads couldn't even steal a lawnmower. So it has to be a a problem if someone can take their mind to an extent to kill both parents that created them on heaven and earth through God. It has to be some mental problems that needs to be addressed. That's what I say. Because I've been 16, you've been 16, there are a million trillion 16 year olds that wouldn't do kill their parents and shoot their parents with their own weapon in their own house with their own gun. It speaks for itself. The evidence leads the detectives to believe it was everything inside of that house. And it is what it is. So the thing of it is, like I said, a lot of young people need a lot of mental help and psychological help. Oftentimes we give our kids the world and the more you give them, the worse they get. And growing up in my day, I mean, our parents took stuff from us all the time, but you better not even mumble under your voice. And we still loved them and respected them because we knew that they were the ones that were taking care of us. How can you be angry and say your parents pissing you off when they're the ones that are spending their money doing everything for you? And to say your parents pissing you off when you're the one that's wrong. That means you're wrong all the way around. When you use that word, your parents are pissing you off when you know you're doing all these things that the school and other people see. And then it tells you that it's not just the parents. It's the person that's being bad. It's the person that has life screwed all the way around to the left. So my thing is uh, mental health help is very necessary and especially in this particular case 
And that is why I could not be a judge, a jury. I wouldn't even want to be a police on the scene. One of the police that gathered the evidence on the A.J. Armstrong scene said, the evidence led me there. I mean, it was everything locked in. I mean, it was kind of like when you're in an environment, you can feel exactly what's going on. And especially when you're a trained police officer. The thing of it is when kids get everything, too much of everything, sometimes they feel like you're obligated to do it. And then when you take it away from them, they feel like you shouldn't have done that because they were they were obligated to receive all of those things. And at that point, it was theirs and they were in control instead of the parents. And that's just my take on it. And I'm just telling the truth. All the evidence in this case has led everyone. I, you know, I've been reading it online and everyone is like, guilty, guilty, lock him up, throw away the key. And I feel like the key shouldn't be thrown away because of age, because of the age, he was 16, and because of the drugs, because it had to be a demon to tell anyone to kill their parents. That is the worst thing that any human being can ever do on this heaven and earth. And especially if you can walk in with a smile and you don't cry in the beginning and you cry five or six days later in the third trial like AJ did. That has shown the jury that he's guilty. Because you can only take so much when you do a crime and eventually that stuff just catches up with you and you have no other choice but to break down. Especially if it becomes your parents. Another thing is oftentimes there's always something that's going to bring it out. Like the evidence. Like the mother saying, it wasn't the alarm, it was you. Oftentimes people that are deceased, they're the ones that solve their own cases. Because that's the way God did it. And they come back. They come back in a spirit but what they have left behind to solve their own cases. When a mother speaks, a good mother, that it has shown, that had given their kids the world, the mother and the father, God will come back through that dead person and correct everything so people that don't believe it can see it for what it's worth. I'm not a judge. I'm not a jury. I'm not a police officer. And I don't want to be because this is a case that I would never, ever want to be on. Because I'm not the one that can lay down at night and know that this kid had to pay his life for doing something that he did through drugs. Payback, yes, you have to pay. But I'm just not the one to do it like that for life. I feel that there should be some payback. And there also, sh also should be some mental health uh, situation. Because for anyone to go to that extent... You know that's a health issue. You know that's a mental issue. Everybody knows. It's, it has to be because, I mean, how many 16-year-olds are there in the world and they're not doing that to their parents that take their stuff? So there has to be a mental problem to go to that extent. Nothing but the devil. Help needs to be on the way ASAP. And also help needs to be with the people that support him thinking that he didn't do it 
when all the evidence is saying that he did. Even though I'm not a judge and not a jury, but they need help too. Because don't you know love is blind? I have people in my family that are just like his family. I'm just being real. I am just being real. And remember Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? I mean, that song made a lot of sense. What's love got to do with it? You can love somebody. Uh, a lot of people love people that hate them. A lot of women love men that can't stand them and beat them and everything, and they love them, still loving them with all the wrong that they're doing. I know people like that, too. So I'm just uh, speaking about this trial and pointing out what's in the media and all of the comments that I've seen lately is guilty. I wish I could say anything else, but that's all I've been saying. Guilty, guilty, guilty. So, I mean, I was wishing that he would have went on and pleaded guilty and that way he could have gotten, you know, out earlier or pleaded guilty and they do some type of uh, evaluation, mental evaluation, because this is some serious stuff here. I mean, that is serious. And you know it had to be drugs. Like I said, oftentimes people do stuff and the next day they wake up and they're in jail. And they're like, what did I do? What did I do? But in this particular case, if you premeditate things, that's what makes it worse. Like it's a real serious, devious problem, demon problem, demonetic problem. Something that the devil has embedded into someone's mind when you premeditate a day's things. Such as the bombing, such as the alcohol and the gasoline on the carpet such as saying they're pissing me off and then killing them. That is premeditation, which means you know there's a demon somewhere to give a person that much time to think, to continuously want to commit a crime. Needs help. That's, that needs some attention mental attention and it could be just like the brother had a problem that probably could have stemmed down to that child so i'm going to end with this god has the situation all in his hands oh but before i end my show the thing of it is, everyone was wondering. Nobody took up any money to find out who did it. Even the kid never came out and said, I want to know who did it. I'm going to take up money to find out who did it. Because even that would have showed something that perhaps he didn't do it because he's trying to find out who did it for. There has been zero for seven years, nobody is putting up any money to try to find out who did it. Because someone told me, they said, you know what? If they put up money who did it, a family member gonna talk and tell he did it. They're gonna tell on him. So it's best not to put up any money than to put it up and have someone come behind your back and go ahead and tell the truth. Because remember the case in Houston, uh, there was a Hispanic guy in Houston and a baby was crying and the father asked, he was shooting his gun outside. The baby was crying and the father approached the gunman about, you know, can you go further down and shoot your gun so my baby can stop crying? That man went back and shot up that whole house, killed those people. But guess what? immediately a reward was up. And this AJ case, no reward up for two people, his mother and father. 
So that tends to let people know right there that something's not right. Because if a reward is put up, you know someone's going to talk and tell. That's what everyone's saying. So this case has just been really, really a case that has to come to an end either way. Either way it goes. And I am so happy. I'm not the judge. And I'm not the jury. And I'm not anybody that's subpoenaed to it. I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't be able to take it. Not me. I would not be able to stand that trial. I would not be able to stand it because of the situation of how it happened and of the situation of everybody's standing up for AJ and not his parents. If I was AJ, I'd be standing up for my parents too. To let everybody know, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. That's what I would be doing. But nobody did nothing, which tends to, from what I be, what I hear around, is it tend to make them think that everyone knows and they know that it's AJ. And only God knows. And I'm going to end with that. And thank God I don't have to be the one to be the jury. If they would have called me, I couldn't do it. Many people said, I could, I could. Not me. My heart's too good for that. I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And so I am so happy that I wasn't the one to have to convict AJ of murdering his parents. And to God be the glory and it's all in his hands because someone did it and no reward is up to find who did it. So that lets people think, wow, well, okay, well, they got the killer because it's been nothing. Have a good night. Bye.